Hiya, yeah, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to digitise the negatives we made in the previous video. Link below. And uh, I'm using nothing more than a light pad, just off of uh, uh, Amazon, uh, CLI 95 level, so you get a good level of light. I've got my Canon R, but you can use any DLS, DSLR. Uh, for a lens, I've got a 105mm Sigma, uh, which I have on manual focus. And on my Canon R, I have the um, the focus assist where it where it goes red on the screen, on the back of the back of the camera, to help key and focus. Um, so that's that. That's that. That's that. And to hold the film, um, I've tried loads of different ways of uh, holding the film. Uh, a piece of glass that I got off of. Um, I didn't get off. I didn't get the glass off of, but. Sean Tucker has done a video uh, similar to this. Uh, you might want to go and watch it. I'll put a link below. Um, where he uses a piece of glass and very similar setup with the with the same lens, I think, and uh, what have you. Um, I tried that. Yep, worked okay. A bit fiddly, a bit too fiddly for my liking. Um, I've also bought other uh, things that supposedly help you. Um, load the film in but they, they ones where you have to guide the film in yeah from one side to the other uh, tend to get stuck in the gap that is going out if if like most of us and if anyone's got a tip on how to decurl uh film so it gets flat that'd be brilliant if you could share that one that'd be that'd be awesome um so i was sitting there sort of thinking how, how can i do this how can i get keep an image as flat as possible while I take the um, thing and feed it through safely without scratching it. And I'm sitting there scratching and I thought, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, young man. I have the uh, privilege <laughs> of owning a enlarger for my negatives to print them. And uh, I thought, well, hold on, I could use the, I could use the carriage with the 35, in this case, 35 mil, or any uh, set of um, masks uh, for any size film that I want to do. In this particular case, this is off my 601, my Dura 601, and it lifts it off of the um, off of the uh, the light source to give it an even look. It's 35 mil trimmed already ready to go i've got it as close as i can get it to maximum fill on the uh on the uh, sensor so i'm getting the whole sensor near enough uh, not far off it's a 30 meg sensor so it's more than enough um and that's what i use uh, i bought another one i got this off ebay uh, this particular one which was a which, which is a spare for my for my my uh Enlarger cost me 15 quid. Um, <laughs> it, it works fine. Uh, from the previous video, we did the HP5 and the uh, two rolls of uh, T Max 3200 that I did at lower speed, blah blah blah. So I'm going to do the HP5 this way, yeah, not all of them because it takes a while and you know, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. Then I'll go on to the screen capture and we'll do the whole three rolls and see how they come out. And I'll show you how to um, invert them and everything. So give me a second. I'll just get the roll. Get the. Uh, I've not seen these. They're still on their uh, their hooks. I don't know if this will pick this up, but probably not. No. So anyway, they're still on their hooks. I'm getting them off their hooks, off camera. And you see that? Oh yeah, there you go. So I'm literally just getting them off their, their hooks, as you probably heard there, and the clips. This is the HP5, which I shot at 200 ISO and developed at 400. So what I'm using, so I've got the the the, the um, 
the reel of film, the whole thing, I haven't cut it up into bits, yeah. And I've got a one of my trays for developing here. Put it off to the side in line. Okay. So I'm gonna put the film that I'm working on into the tray, which is all soft edges and there's no dust. And talking of dust, it'll be blower. Just to move on to the next picture, you just lift it up gently, like just above, and then using the guides. There's two sort of guides here that hold it for the 35, or you can push them back for the, the larger picture. So there we go. The focus is in. Capture. There we go. Let's move it a little bit. So we'll just uh, straighten out a little bit. There we go. That should do. Lovely. Then we just lift up again. There we go. We're still in focus because we haven't moved much. Do the capture. And basically rinse and repeat really, just keep moving the film along. Like so. And capture it. Don't worry about whether they're upside down or back front or whatever you. Some focus and done. moved a little bit so that's my fault maybe I just need to put some weight on here somewhere but not a major problem just put it back be more gentle there we go be more gentle and as you can see you can rattle through um, a roll of film sharpish okay now what I'm going to do now because I'm at two or six two or six yeah so on this one move it up or maybe the next one because it's still uh, still showing here take that picture and move along remember I'm lifting this up I'm not pulling it through I'm giving, lifting the lid up a little bit and then bringing it through. So now I'm at two or six. So get me scissors, which I've lost. Hold on a minute. So I've got scissors. Two or six. One is in there. It and pop it in the folder in a mo. But I'm just going to put it on the side here. So that's all okay. So we'll just move these in, lift it up a little bit. That squeaking is just it in the tray, which we'll just line up. That's all okay. Lovely. This is, these pictures of Corfe Castle near Swanage. So I think you've got the idea, haven't you? Yeah? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that speed up the camera thing. Right? And then I'll take all these images onto my big machine and do the turning them from negatives to positives, I suppose. And uh, show you how I do that. Back later.